Today we're gonna to be taking these giant blocks of foam and making a 16 foot monster legacy. Hey guys, we're getting ready to start a brand new chapter in flight test. We're going to be taking these two big blocks of foam, a hot wire cutter, and build the biggest airplane we've ever done in our lives. This is our manufacturing building. This is where all of our speed build kits are made. Uh, but upstairs in the mezzanine, we have two brand new hot wire cutters. Now, we've never actually used CNC hot wire cutters before. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be a whole new learning experience for us. So what better opportunity to take a new learning experience, new equipment, a new material, and go big as possible. We're gonna be making a 16 foot giant FT legacy. Now, these things are as big as a house. They you are. need to get them upstairs. So uh, Time to start pumping iron, or at least foam. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing our cool factor. <laughs> I gotta get my fingers under here. Tilt it. That was too loud. All right. We got two big blocks of foam. We're gonna build a big airplane. All right, so we have two major machines here, Dave. Uh, what's this first one do here? Okay, um, the, the larger of the two machines we're gonna use to cut, or rough cut our yeah. foam blocks to put into the smaller machine. Yeah. Um, the smaller machine just has more detail. It can turn a higher radius, so it's more compact, which means the wire, when it does the four axis, can actually turn at a much deeper throat. So fuselage pieces, wings, uh, tapered wings, things like that will be a lot easier on the smaller one. We're gonna try to start out easy, and we're gonna cut out our first block for our wings. I would say that's a success. That is a success. So this right here, this is the cord of our wing. So it's about 32 inch wing cord here. Um, and then we're gonna have the left and the right wing both being cut out of this. Now our next step here is we need to cut this in segments, correct? Yes, yeah, for uh, the different lengths of the sections of the wing. Great. We have three main sections here. We have our center section, which is just gonna basically be nothing but a wing root. Then we have the middle section, which is gonna have split flaps. It's also gonna be where our pods are gonna be mounted for our motors. And then the outer section is gonna have our ailerons. That was too loud. All right, Josh, what are we <laughs> doing here? The moment's come. First panel out. There's the lightning hole. Oh, that is awesome. I'm just making you suffer for it. Holy cow. That looks nice. That is definitely a wing. Oh, we are going to have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> I'm excited. All right, Dave, you ready for the test run? All right, yeah, we're going to cut some uh, larger pieces of wing here, and we'll see what happens, I guess. Awesome. All right, Dave, should we let Noah do it? Yeah. All right. Okay. You ready for the moment? Here. Sh should I take that one out? I want you to take, uh, let's do this one. <laughs> Might have to try <laughs> Go for it. Oh my goodness. That's therapy right there. <laughs> That's so nice. That's so nice. Right there's, right there's a wing for a small plane. There you go. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We can just turn that into like a, a simple cub wing or something. Now we got the true test. You ready here? Grab this, uh, grab this yeah. camera. Josh, gonna... Josh gets the pull. Ready? I don't know if it'll work. You ready? It's like the perfect jigsaw puzzle. So, so that's a, so that's part of the wing. That is, yeah, that is not even the full part. There is still this section. There's still this whole section, and then where is, and then this one piece right here, which is the middle section. It comes on it. Yeah, so when this wing's done, 
it'll go from the floor of manufacturing up to the very bottom of our exhaust tubes. And uh, we are looking at the accuracy. It's perfect. So we're learning a lot. This is so cool. We got a whole other section to build. So Dave is doing a really great job building these wings. I'm back at HQ here. I gotta do things like design the fuselage and the tail assembly here to get ready for the next pieces. This plane's gonna be huge, it's gonna be versatile, and it's gonna carry a ton of cargo. Speaking of cargo and versatility, our sponsor today is Decked. One thing we love about our deck system is the drawer system. The drawer system enables us to take our table saws, our batteries, lock them safely, and oftentimes when we finish a shoot up late at night, we don't have to go back home and unload everything. We just simply lock the drawer system and we know it's gonna be safe for tomorrow. The deck drawer system is strong, it's secure, and it gives you peace of mind knowing that you're not gonna lose your stuff when you're not around. Now, if you guys know flight tests, you know how much of a passion it is for us to build and source everything from the USA that we use for our speedboat kits for our model airplanes. DEC has the same heart, and their DEC systems are 100% made in the USA, and they stand behind their products with 100% guarantee of customer satisfaction. Now, I know not everyone has a truck, but if you do, you will not regret having a DEC drawer system in your truck. Go down to the link below or go to deck.com slash flight test and get free shipping on your next deck drawer system. Now I have a lot of work to do. Dave's almost done cutting. I gotta get him some more files. Dave, what are we about to do? Um, we are getting ready to cut a section of the fuselage of the new Legacy. First four axis. Basically the way a four axis works is both gantries are running off a separate G-code or separate information here. This has a pattern and this has a pattern and that's given us now a three-dimensional object where typical airfoil is simply a flat image that's cut out and both gantries are moving together. This gives us the ability to make really complicated shapes that we can stitch together to make it look like a molded fuselage. All right, I'm pushing the button. Oh no. Okay, so yeah, that's a problem. So Dave, what happened? Okay, um, apparently our uh, rapid rate, which is the rate at which this travels before it actually cuts, was too fast. And we just put this brand new board on top of the machine to kind of help set the foam down. Fortunately, it's slippery, and uh, with the extra speed, it just moved the whole block rather than cut into it. So, perfect. We're going to use my lunchbox. Go. Add a little extra weight to it, so hopefully it doesn't slide. Hopefully we get the curve right so it doesn't cut through your lunchbox too. That would probably be a good idea. Yeah. You Helps can. when you know what you're doing. Like a slider. <laughs> so that was, that was a little bit of a fail. Unfortunately, when I cut this block of foam, we're just trying to um, use every piece that we have available to us right now. And it had a little cutout in the foam that I didn't notice. It was on the back side. Unfortunately, if that showed up in our part, that would be on the side of the fuselage. Wouldn't look good at all. So we'll redo it and uh, give it another shot. So now that we figured out how to use the four axis CNC, we're gonna go ahead and do the same process for the rest of the body. What I'm doing right now is I'm pulling the information from the program I used to design the Monster Legacy, and then I'm gonna be handing that over to Dave and convert it into G-code, and then we'll be able to cut out the rest of the pieces. So the reason that we chose to do a 16-foot Legacy is that this plane is incredible to me in so many reasons. First of all, it's modeled after a senior Telemaster, which was one of my childhood airplanes that really shaped my whole hobby and my love for versatile aircraft. This plane is also real special to us because when we decided to do a crowdfund, this Legacy was one of the perks for our community members that chose to support Edgewater. And as you can see, Edgewater has become everything we hoped it can be and even more thanks to our community. This crowdfund gave us the opportunity to not only move to Edgewater, but to also run programs where we can teach friends and family how to fly, have family nights, have flying events, and have many other activities, all focused around connecting people. Because of what you guys as a community have done for us, we now have this beautiful location where we can engage families, we can teach them to fly, we can connect them, we can have flying events. We cannot thank you enough for making this chapter of Flight Test possible, and every time I look at this legacy, it's a reminder of that. We thought there'd be no better opportunity to take in a new material that we've never worked with before, and bring back the legacy as a version two as a way to celebrate this new chapter for flight test. We got a bunch more pieces to bring down for manufacturing. We got some building to do. What are your thoughts on this plane, Dave? It's really big. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a great flying plane though. I think it's just gonna float, have a real good presence in the air. <laughs> Thank you.
This isn't even giant. This is ginormous. I don't know. Mega? <laughs> mega? Yeah, mega. That's that's it. Mega Legacy. <laughs> I think we just named it. <laughs> So when you put it all together, it kind of puts in perspective, this is definitely the biggest thing we have ever built and created here at HQ. Were you surprised about the weight difference? You know, I don't think we could possibly make foam board as light as what this foam is. This wing assembly, I don't even think that's two pounds, yeah. maybe three pounds. And it's already really strong as it is. It is, it is. So what's our next steps? I say uh, we try to test fit all the wings and everything together and just make sure everything lines up good. <laughs> All right, let's start fitting things together. Last two, it should slide right in, we'll see. Oh, boop! You hit down that? <laughs> My friend was super satisfying. You guys ready? All right. It's gonna sag a little bit. It's totally gonna sag. <laughs> Oh, it looks like a B-52. <laughs> what do you think the weight of this is? Oh, that's a good question. I'm holding it with one hand like it's nothing. Uh, I'm gonna say seven. Seven? Okay. All right, I'm gonna go with 8.75 pounds. I'm gonna go nine and a half. Ooh! Eclipse, eclipse me. Oh, oh, oh. What is it? Seven pounds. Seven no. pounds. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It was right on. <laughs> I said, see, I should have kept my original gas tag, man. Yeah, you were kind of. Uh, six yeah, and a half, I, seven. I think I stole it from you. No, you did, you win. I think the final stuff will catch up with us. But you know, this is encouraging. Just with these tubes on the leading edge of trailing edge, which are strictly meant for alignment, we haven't even put the spar in it yet. It's holding together. Right. So, this whole center section is roughly the same size as our tail. So that's gonna be a center section, then the outer wing panels are gonna plug in. That means the motors and everything are right on the center. This is gonna be really easy to transport for us as well, even though it's so big. Yeah, this is one half of the tail. Actually, half it's gonna get cut down a little bit, but just to give a perspective on the cord. <laughs> That, that's awesome. one of the biggest, one of the biggest, and probably in the top five biggest planes we've ever made out of foam board. So, 119 inches or something. <laughs> Look at that. That's great. So, Dave, what are we about to do? I am putting together the uh, Hot Wire Foam Factory bow for manually cutting our windshield. It's a little bit too sharp of an angle to do on the CNC machine. So, we're going to give this a shot with some templates and uh, have you guys along for the ride. Yeah, even if you don't have a CNC hot wire cutting machine, when you use DevFuse and you draw out your designs, it gives you an option to print out every one of your formers and it even gives you the crucial information like the spacing in between it to get the right geometry. The really nice thing about that is, is you can save these formers and these templates for later and if you ever have to repair something or build another one, you just simply pull it out, pin it on some foam and away you go again. Nice thing about this bow also is it can go into two different sizes so you can do something very intricate or you can go really big for a wing panel. It's, it's very important to keep the hot wire moving though. If you sit in one spot too long, it builds up more heat and it'll actually indent on the foam more. So yeah, we'll give it a shot here. All right. All right I want to do the other yes, side Yes. No, no, well, not because, not because <laughs> I don't trust you. I just want um, to try it. The wire was catching on the plywood, so you gotta try so, to hold it light. And, and that is something too. Masonite is a much better template than hot wire. So I'm gonna try this. Plywood. Other than plywood, yeah. All right, your hands clear? Yeah. Oh boy. If you do mess up, it's not the end of the world because it's plenty of material to be able to sand down and you can kind of feather stuff and get away with a little bit of everything a, like that. Yeah. One nice thing, as we said in the beginning, we're going to be taking you guys through the process from learning the CNC, the hot wire bow, and everything in between. And we're basically still learning too. <laughs> okay. All right, friends, we have our pieces cut out. We're ready to finally start assembling. Yeah, we pretty much spent all week cutting out foam blocks. Yeah, and what a phenomenal learning experience. As we said in the beginning of this video here, we want to take you along the journey, working with a new material, but also new tools and equipment, whether it's a CNC hot fire cutter or a bow. Uh, this is really a cool experience. Yeah, um, and if you guys want to uh, see us put this thing together, stay tuned for the next video. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time.